it was always meant to be. The Florida Panthers defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs 5-2, to two, get some help, and have officially clinched the Atlantic Division and now sets up a round one series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We break all of this down and more on today's Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, April 17th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Ramon Velez from the Hockey News. If you follow me on X at Monoman12, follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore. F L A Panthers and shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You can find that all on Game Time. Use code Locked On NHL. So, man, what a roller coaster for the Panthers and us just watching these last two nights of. What needed to be set up for the Panthers to become the Atlantic Division champions? And all this talk about what the better matchup is and what is not for the Panthers and just rest versus going for it. Well, the Florida Panthers did definitely answer that question as far as whether they were going to go for it or not. And it, it, it paid off with the Florida Panthers coming out with a 5-2 to two win and tilting the ice in the final 40 minutes, especially in period number two where they got 31 Shots on goal, a franchise record. And this will be a great time to bring in my guest here on the show. It is a Winans Wednesday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Jacob Winans is here. And Jacob, welcome to the show. And man, what what a way to end the regular season. Game 82, game 162, week 18. Th- this is an e- anxiety driver as far as the world of sports. And as you can tell, I'm pumped. Yeah, and you've got every right to be. Uh, it usually doesn't come down to the last day of the season. Um, and for the Panthers and a lot of other teams in the league, uh, today was a huge day, uh, monumental game 82, which uh, it's entertaining. It's a lot of fun for fans. But um, I, I got to be honest, I was not expecting to, to be recording this with, with the Panthers having clinched another Atlantic division um, mm-hmm. to, to win the division title after last year getting in as a wild card. Uh, the last wild card, it's it's huge. And uh, Bill Zito is now he's he's won he's put together a team that's won two Atlantic divisions in three years. So that's that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, two Atlantic divisions, a President's Trophy, a trip to the Stanley Cup Final. You you have all that with his resume, and and especially <laughs> seeing the fruits of his labor after, even prior to his extension uh, with with the Panthers and all, and just. When when you look at this one for for the Panthers, I mean the 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 Leafs they had the they doubled the amount of shots for the Panthers in the in the in the first period. I mean, it, 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 the Panthers were a little bit lack lack of day, lackadaisical. Emily Kaplan even spoke on the interme- in the intermission that Paul Maurice wasn't happy. I'm like, wow, Paul Maurice really is going for this. Like I was I was thinking this whole time about getting getting the play right, but I also think this has to do with the stretch that they were on when they were losing some games and they weren't getting their game right. But even towards the end of their little skid, we were starting to see that uh, for, for the Panthers too, right before they brought, came home. So uh, you could understand why the emphasis of the of Paul Maurice was to go for it, not only to get home ice in a possible second round, now that is possibly secured for the Panthers. But man, the second period where the, the Panthers kept on the attack, for checking and, and and overwhelming the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, Toronto had nothing to play for. All, all, their mission was to just feed Austin Matthews the puck, and we saw that multiple times with possible redirections, missing the net, crashing the net, where Anthony Stolarz was just incredible in, in stopping it. And and there were a few times where we thought that that puck was going to go in, uh, e- even when before the Panthers scored three goals in – Three minutes and ten seconds, which Carver Hagee first game back gets on gets on the board uh, for for the Panthers. Welcome back to the lineup. Sam Reinhart gets two, including the empty netter. Two um, fifty seven goals for Sam Reinhart, and just the the Panthers, man. 
and and once again, home four four games in your that in your in your barn. You and you finish with a bang to to get to this point. And thank you, Ottawa, uh, too. So that's the most important thing as far as that. So uh, I threw a lot out, out, out on you on you there, but man, uh, the floor and also. This game mo- was mostly played on special teams too. The Florida Panthers, I mean, there was a lot of coincidental minors, but then the Panthers really got the the Leafs also to bite on on them to get some power plays too. So that was an advantage. Pan- Panthers, seventeen shots on the power play too. Jacob, just incredible. Yeah, and and uh, the power play has been a little bit of a concern lately. Uh, and, and I guess the the end result tonight doesn't really doesn't really give you too much. Uh, to look to look at as far as as far as the power play coming through with uh, goals, but aside from that, I, I thought they played really well. I thought the power play looked good. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought the puck was moving around. They got their chances, um, and and that's not as much of a concern for me going into the into the postseason now. But uh, getting out of this game healthy was priority number one. It seems that the Panthers were able to do that, uh, and then just also the the level of dominance they showed without Ekblad in the lineup without. Uh, Oliver Eggman Larson in the lineup. This was this is not the Panthers' playoff defense, uh, and defensively they they had a, a really really good uh, shutdown performance, especially in that in the the second period and and carried right over into the third period. Uh, it seemed like the first period it was uh, really sluggish. Got, it, it didn't seem like they were too into it, but uh, Paul Maurice really stuck to his guns. He 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 wanted to go out there and get a have a chance at the division. Um, we kind of wonder if, if at any point they they found out that that Ottawa had lost it on the ropes or uh, how that game was looking, but um, maybe Matthew Kachuk has to thank his little brother for his role in helping the Panthers win the division. But um, it's yeah, it, it, it definitely wasn't expected. I I, I kind of expected Boston to to uh, care a little more and 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 really push to win the division. And not saying they didn't, um, but I I thought they were gonna kind of walk all over Ottawa tonight and the Panthers game would would be uh relatively meaningless and just hope you get out healthy and get ready for Toronto but uh that's not the case and now now we've got an entirely different animal to look ahead to and uh should be really exciting but also uh definitely a nerve-wracking series coming up but man this just as a sports fan as a hockey fan this is this is a crazy crazy night uh just not not just Panthers but across the league especially the Eastern Conference it's it was a wild, wild evening in, in the NHL. Yeah, and and when when just when you think about the the Panthers' ability to just tilt the ice to when it when it comes to how how they were putting consistent pressure on on the on on the Leafs and all, and and other guys got it going too. Ben, ben Sam Bennett, twenty goal score for the for the Panthers. I mean, I, uh, too for 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 him. Uh, Montour Montour getting getting on the scoreboard too with which the the goals that the Panthers created were really when when they were on the four check on the give and goes cleaning up the loose change two of them were on on putts with w- um via loose change Verhage's was one and and Sam Reinhardt's was one with uh with the with the goal at 10:42 um of the of the second period too for for the Panthers and just when it when it comes to just it, it was no passengers type of night for, for, for the Panthers. I know that term gets used very loosely in all, and they are four of 51 on the power play. Uh, as, as of late, we movement looked great, but Ray Ferraro even also spoke about up and down. There were a lot of the questions were for, for Toronto. Uh, the biggest question going into for them is who's starting in gold for game one. We don't have to worry about that uh, now for if because the Panthers aren't facing them. But also, th- he went on in that sentence saying, "I look at the teams who are who prevent at five on five, and the five on five scoring for the Panthers has improved in the in the in the in the last uh, few in the in, a lot, in the last week and a half. So th- this gives me this gives me the confidence that the Panthers can get that timely scoring for them. And he even spoke about the ability, the inability, and um, the also for preventing goals at five on five and Panther Florida, they, 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 <laughs> they only have six o- OTLs on the, on the season. So this speaks volumes on as far as getting the division and all that stuff. And also how that translates. And obviously the, we can reference the run, but also it's this season too, about how 
they they've dealt with uh even strength five on five regulation and all um it's uh it, it was always meant to be for the panthers here yeah and I, you hit the nail right on the head there i think at the end of the day the right team won the division uh if you look at the standings boston really no, no knock on them they're a great team and, and they kind of took it to the panthers this year uh in their head-to-heads but um that's a team that that really climbed the the standings based on overtime losses the the ot loser points um they they fed off of the, those a lot and and the panthers have them beat in in the win column and uh you'd like to see the team that wins the most games rewarded uh, and that's that's how it ends up shaking out here um but yeah it's it's encouraging the the even strength uh not necessarily the even strength offense uh which has been good lately but the even strength defense has been a strength all season uh being able to keep pucks out of the back of your net at five on five is that's really the key to, to winning in the postseason. And we, we saw how close the the margin of error is in, in some of these series, the Boston series, the Carolina series. Uh, one goal can can sway an entire series. Uh, and being able to keep things level at five on five is is hugely important until you break through with a goal of your own. And uh, if the Panthers have a five on five advantage, that that plays very, very nicely into their hands. Uh, in the first round against Tampa because Tampa has done most of their damage on special teams. And uh, when, when you look at that matchup, the, uh, the, the key is right there in front of you. You stay out of the box and you beat them at five on five. That's the only way to get it done. Yep. And uh, definitely a lot more to, to just look forward to, but also know that this is going to be a big challenge ahead for, for the Panthers, but we're going to, we're going to transition over to segment number two. We're going to, we're going to discuss more about the craziness of the Eastern conference and discuss more about Paul Maurice's gamble uh, too. We're going to break that down more here on a locked on Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by game time. And GameTime is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the GameTime app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. So if you're already trying to save a little bit of dollars for the next Marlins game, you could save even more and basically almost get tickets for free thanks to GameTime. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, GameTime takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Uh, And... Save up to 60% buying last-minute sports of comedy, concerts, theater, and more. Save even more in exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Save even more when you choose the section and let game time choose the seats. Get a panoramic view from your seat on the app before you buy, or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live on April 17th at 7 p.m. Streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. The ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. to hear from the local experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts, even on fantasy football angle. Locked On NFL Draft is on April 17th at 7 p.m. Streaming live on a Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and the free Amazon TV channels app. Back on this Wednesday, April 17th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Wednesday. So <laughs> the craziness of the playoffs continue uh, with, uh, with a crazy game 82. Jacob, I moved my... TV from my bedroom to the living room so I could watch three games at once on the night. Usually I keep it to two and then maybe something minimized on my screen, but I moved one TV over to have three TVs uh, for everything. Had obviously Panthers Maple Leafs out of Senators, uh, Senators versus Bruins. And I had Philadelphia versus uh, Washington. That one had huge implications as 
Philly had to win in regulation. They even pulled the goaltender in, in with three minutes left and Washington scored. But prior to that, Detroit did it again, where they scored in the final minute to force overtime. And, and unfortunately for the Red Wings, they, they win both of them, but they needed more than just uh, them winning in order to advance with Washington winning. Pittsburgh was idle, and their game 82 for them is unfortunately meaningless for them tomorrow against the New York Islanders. So what a crazy night in the NHL, not just with that, but the Boston Bruins also the, um, losing to Ottawa. Just crazy night uh, for the NHL. But also the gamble, the going for it. I remember you were pretty vocal about Paul Maurice and his uh, in putting Carter Hagee in, in the lineup for, for the Panthers and all. I know hindsight is twenty twenty now with 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 them t- getting this win. So, so how 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 are you feeling now with with uh, with it paying off for the Panthers? Yeah, obviously it feels great now. Um, it's it was super nerve wracking and and uh, that's a that's a gutsy decision from Paul Maurice. Uh, there's no there's no two ways about that. That is a that is a gutsy move. Uh, to put Verhage back in there and expose him to uh, a, a game that you know is going to be extremely physical, um, and and uh, for me there was no question about whether or not Verhage was fully healthy. Um, if he's in the lineup in a regular season game uh, less than a week before the playoffs, he's definitely fully healthy. Uh, my concern was just the the risk of re-injury against a team that was going to come out and be really physical and nasty, uh, and and play a, a playoff type of aggressive game against a team that they were expecting at least to, to face in the first round. Um, so that was my, that was my biggest concern, but uh, Carter Verhage obviously makes an impact the second he's back out there. And, and now with hindsight uh, being what it is uh, huge, huge game for, for that second line uh, and allowing them to get that game under their belt ends up being a really good decision now uh, since everybody gets out, unscathed and, and that line produced um that's good for the chemistry we haven't seen the this panthers roster the the post terror senko panthers play at full strength that that much um and letting letting them run the, the forward lines that they're going to take into the postseason is uh that's that's big the fact that they were able to do that get out healthy and and produce the way they did it ends up being a fantastic decision and and um that that doesn't take away the 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 amount of risk associated with with doing that um but it, it ends up paying off and that's uh this time of year those those are the kind of decisions that that can either make you or break you and and in the panthers case tonight it it was a a decision that made them so i'm i'm overall happy with it a um, little bit nerve-wracking going in but but it pays off and i uh, can't argue that yeah and I, uh, here's a quote from Jamison Olive of FloridaPanthers.com of what Maurice said about uh, the second period. Quote, it's more than just the way we look. You could feel it in the energy level on the bench. It's a good way to go into the playoffs. It's not the win. It's the style of hockey you want to play. It's okay. It's there. Just a little reassurance. Close quote. And also, he also discusses, you spoke about Tarasenko. And also, another other media availabilities, too, for for... Florida for the head coach. He's spoken about how Tarasenko and Barkov are always talking on the bench about where to be. So there's constant communication. And also it, it, it shows the professionalism of those two, as far as one who's won a Stanley cup, one who's been with the franchise for 10 years uh, and all just about knowing, knowing where to go and where, and where, where they are going to be as far as, if, if a board battles one, who's going to be the one driving to the net as far as a possible redirection to. So that's another thing when it comes to that is the fact that there's constant communication on, on the bench too. And that's something that Paul Maurice gives a lot of praise to the, to those guys. And the fact that Bennett, um, that Verhage is going to be back with that Bennett line, a line that he's used to two goals on the night at five on five Corsi for uh, 13 to seven, uh, two shot at shot at shot on, shots on goal at five on five nine to nine to three regardless of lack of five on five time for for the Panthers the the, the those top two lines were going and and the fact that you get at least one game under your belt there it goes back to what Paul Murray said the reassurance as far as the style of play and knowing that of, of those guys who can click with one another 
Yeah, and and I think it comes at a really good time because prior to Verhage getting back in the lineup, you you saw Bennett, Kachuk, and Cousins uh, was really rolling. So uh, now it's almost a situation where you have – it really feels like you have five, five lines that you can trust because uh, if there should be someone who struggles in that top six, uh, if there's a, a drop-off in play, if there's an injury, uh, you know you can put Cousins on that second line and, and they're still going to produce. And then getting Verhage back – uh, you, you worry about, well, Bennett, Kachuk, Cousins are producing. Could this mess up the chemistry? Could it could it throw off uh, their production? And then you have a game like tonight, it completely eases that concern. So uh, it's it was a very, very, very risky, gutsy decision. Uh, but the payoff could be huge because now you've got you've got confidence in in a ton of different line combinations. That fourth line. Uh, you've got w- with Cousins being able to move to that fourth line. You've got Stenlin, Cousins, Lomberg, uh, Gadjevich, Opozo, Prince. Um, that that fourth line has so many options, and uh, the the top nine right now is is absolutely humming. Yeah, and and you said it's a, there's like an extra fit a fifth line for the for the Panthers as well. I feel like Kyle Opozo's uh role is going to be very similar to Joe Thornton a few years ago, not necessarily starting the playoffs, but if things get a little bit off the rails, you could see someone like, uh, like Kyle Ocho come into the, to the mix for, for the Panthers here in, in the postseason. So great to still have that veteran presence for them as far as, and, and he's going to do, he himself is even going to do so much off the ice as far as team meetings. And as, as far as that too, for, for him. So even, even if he's skating around with the guys who are scratches, there's there's also some time to to get get some reps in too for for him too. So it's not just the inside of the game. It's but the but outside of it too for 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 him and, and a leader like him, very unselfish guy uh, for for him. So that it's it's just uh for for the cats. I mean, can't can't feel any better when it when it comes to when it comes to this uh, one for for the Panthers too. So, who and uh, now. Everything shifts now to the first round. Panthers, lightning. We're going to transition over to segment number three, where we're going to get give our first impressions of the series, and we are going to ask the, que- ask the question, when, when, when will we think game one will happen? We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. And I have been told that I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up the amazing cities that bring you money. The best part is, is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent of my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge awards. Get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Third and final segment here on this Wednesday, April 17th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Wednesday. So the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning, round one, a battle of Florida, part three now uh, for for these two franchises. Tampa Bay is taking the first two in the in the postseason, first one in six games in 2021, and then a, a four-game sweep in 2022 in the second round. Now the third time that these two teams are meeting in the last four years in the postseason. So Jacob, the, 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 this was always a matter of the Panthers needing to face their demons eventually for, for the Panthers too. So this is my early impression of this is, this is your time to prove not only to Tampa, not only the NHL world, 
but it's more to prove to yourself that that you can that you can finally get over big brother a, a team that's dominated you for 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 ages and even in past the regular season so that is my first impression of it this is your opportunity to exercise those demons the panthers won the season series two games to one in in, in it of winning both games at emily that's something worth noting as far as how they've been able to win on the road there but we all know you can still throw those out the windows because rivalry for 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 this one so your first impressions as far as this series well, I'm I'm pretty excited for it, and the 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 reason for that is I have I have been vocal about this, and it, it may be a little bit superstitious. It may uh, it may not make the most sense to some people, but I really really do feel like that for whatever reason, for the Panthers to get over the hump and win a Stanley Cup, they're gonna have to get through Tampa. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it just it just feels like that is it's that's going to be one of the requirements, one of the boxes they have to check uh, whenever they win the Stanley Cup. And we, we, we hope it's this season. Uh, but beating Tampa seems like it's going to it's going to be one of the prerequisites to winning a Stanley Cup. Um, and, and it's it's in a lot of the same ways as as the Washington Capitals, um, they just year after year can't get past Pittsburgh in the postseason. Uh, they, they, they struggled with that matchup. That was, that was their, that was their Goliath. And they, they tried multiple times. Ovechkin, it was such a narrative. Ovechkin can't beat Sidney Crosby in the playoffs. Uh, and, and that was what was holding him back from winning a Stanley cup. And then they finally do it. Uh, they break, they break through, they beat Pittsburgh in six games and they don't look back. They go on to win the Stanley cup that year. This is a little different. Uh, this matchup's coming in the first round. Uh, it's not later on in the postseason a, a, a deep run uh, where they have to beat them later on along the way. But this, to me, it, it feels like the matchup that if you win it, it could propel you the rest of the way. Um, and on the other side, of course, you've got you've got Toronto, uh, who probably feels a lot the same way about Boston. Uh, they they probably feel like they have to conquer Boston to have their run, uh, mm -hmm. and. and that's on the table too, but um, for for the Panthers, it's undoubtedly Tampa. Tampa is the team that they've struggled with in the postseason. Uh, it's not the first time they finished the regular season with a better record than Tampa, uh, and you get to Home the postseason all three times. Exactly, uh, the, all the confidence in the world the first time you play Tampa in the postseason, even without Aaron Eckblad, because uh, he was injured that year. Everyone, you, you kind of stomp them at the end of the regular season. Everyone's riding that high and thinking we can beat them. And then that first round, we give them a great fight, but losing six. The following year, President's Trophy winning team. Uh, you think you can outscore all your troubles and, and uh, you're going to run away with that series. Everyone's excited. And then Vasilevsky goes superhuman and slams the door and, and you don't even win a game in that series. Um, this year, it seems different. Tampa... Tampa has a team that that is not as loaded with top end talent as they used to be. A lot of those faces that that beat the Panthers were gone, and then of course, um, Mikhail Sergachev is is out injured. Uh, he's a big part of that team. Um, but some of their new faces, uh, familiar face, Anthony Duclair, mm -hmm. that's a storyline. Um, Matt Dumba's played well there. Nikita Kucherov was on an offensive tear. Steven Stamkos. Could be his last ride in in Tampa, depending on how that contract negotiation goes. They have a lot to play for. Um, it's not going to be an easy matchup. Uh, this this seems like the year where the Panthers have the best chance uh, to overtake them compared to the first two times, but uh, it, it's it's not going to be easy by any means. And on the other side of things, it feels like a last leg, possible last hurrah for that. In in the case that Stamkos does move on in free agency yep. this year, so. There's going to be some desperation on both sides. Also, uh, Kucherov is uh, close to 100 assists uh, too, uh, um, so he, he he could finish that uh, tomorrow against the Toronto Maple Leafs on the second end of a back to back. So just uh, crazy what Kucherov has done all season too for for him. Uh, for I believe it's like 40 points more than the next closest player for for him. He's just doing it yep. all, and even though he's not a burner, but what he does as far as no look passes and all winning the board battles and setting up his teammates. He's just absolutely incredible. And that's one guy you definitely got to 
look out for. Braden Point being the burner that he is in that front presence. Panther killer, cert, um, certified Panther killer for him. And also what Steven Samkos can do on the power play too for, for him. So that's another thing uh, as far as that. So there are quite a lot of venues uh, in the NBA and the NHL who will have uh, possibly some scheduling conflicts as far as the playoffs beginning. But we do have the TV schedule as far as what's going to happen on Saturday and Sunday. So TBS will have a 5 and 8 p.m. game and ESPN will have a 1230 and uh, 3 p.m. game on ESPN on Sunday the, the 21st. Uh, we I am hearing, uh, I cannot confirm this yet, that Panthers lightning could possibly be on Saturday at 5 PM. Obviously with the Toronto Maple Leafs playing the Boston Bruins, anywhere Toronto was going to be, they were going to get the primetime slot. It, like, you know, this as a Yankee fan, uh, um, Jacob, that postseason, you're, if you're the, if you're that, that mar- marketable of a team, you're going to get the, the favorable slot. So now with the, and the Panthers, as far as uh, arena conflicts, there's none. During the during the fir- during these two weeks, in 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 the opening round for them versus Tampa Bay, the only arena conflict that that Tampa Bay has is on the 26th, where there's a concert f- featuring Hart. Uh, if you guys don't know who Hart is, think of the song Barracuda. Um, that is the song reference. Uh, that's the only song I know by them. Uh, so a, po- a a game three cannot happen on Friday too for the for the Panthers and lightning there. So that those are the only ones and the amount of venues too, that are going to have multiple teams, uh, ball arena, crypto.com arena is going to have three teams, except two of them won't have a uh, home ice slash court un- until the game. Um, only the Clippers are have home ice Madison square garden and TD garden. will have both games one and two. So I'm assuming that Bruins Bruins Maple Leafs will be on, on Saturday night. And also Rangers, uh, Rangers game one will be on Sunday where, whenever they play. So that's also, also a little bit of guessing, guessing game, putting the puzzle pieces together as far as the, the this for, for the schedule. So it's going to be fun. Uh, definitely a w- um, because the Panthers don't have as many bookings there. This is past game one is going to be hard to predict as, as far as when, when they will be, but just uh, when, 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 when do you think we'll see game one of, of this uh, series? Well, my gut is telling me it's going to be Saturday. Um, I don't think, I don't think the, the league is going to wait too long to get this series going. Um, but at the same time, uh, if it's not Saturday, I'd be shocked if they play a game before Monday night, um, which I don't think, I don't think a, a wait that long serves anybody well, but uh, the the tricky part is I don't know if we go through that whole weekend without seeing a single Western Conference matchup. Yeah. Um, there's there's four available slots over the weekend. Uh, I don't know that you get through Saturday and Sunday without any of the Western Conference series actually getting underway. And if if you assume Saturday night goes to Boston Toronto. The, the three other options, one of them is immediately off the board. 1230 Sunday is off the board for a Western Conference team because that'd be nine. That'd be either 10 a.m., 9 a.m., so an early time out there on the in the Western not ne- Conference. Not necessarily true. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks don't have home court, but the Dallas Stars do have home ice. So That's true. That is, a, that is a possibility. Central time zone. They could have, The Dallas Stars could host uh, too. Say, um, same thing with Vancouver, uh, too. They don't have to deal with a, they don't have to deal with a basketball team. They don't have to do, um, all that. Colorado doesn't ha- doesn't have home ice, so the Denver Nuggets can schedule Ball Arena in the first of two games, while uh, Colorado can also, uh, be on the road to start, um, too. So we could see Winnipeg, um, also in the 12, thir- 12 o'clock or, or three thirty slots too. So that's another thing. Yeah, I, I I feel like if a Western Conference team is going to play over the weekend, it's going to be one. It's going to be that three thirty slot. Um, it, it, for me, I, I don't I don't see them putting a Western Conference team in that twelve thirty. Uh, I I feel like it's going to be that three thirty, um, which which kind of pigeonholes the Panthers a little bit into that five o'clock uh, Saturday slot. So it, it I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna guess five o'clock Saturday, and if not then Monday. 
but uh, honestly, it it doesn't even really matter. Uh, I, I'm I think that the, the team is ex- super excited to get this series going. I'm excited to get this series going. Um, we know we have a little bit of of anxiety when it comes to afternoon games, so a five o'clock puck drop might make some people a little bit nervous. But uh, I, I think this team's ready to go, and uh, if if the last game against Tampa is any indication, uh, Vasilevsky is still Vasilevsky, but but the Panthers at this at this point in time seems to have the better all around team, so it should be a a pretty fascinating matchup. No doubt. And one more quote before we get out of here uh, from Carver Hagee on the matchup against the Lightning. Quote, it's always fireworks when we play these guys. It's always a good game. They're an awesome team and really skilled physical. They have all the elements of a really good team. It's going to be two good teams going at it. Close quote. So they 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 know they know what's uh what they have on the other side of especially facing them so many times throughout the years. And it's gonna be fun. Uh Verhage going against his former team and also just wanting to get over that hump. And like you said. If it if they are destined to win it, big getting over Big Brother is the big key to doing so. But Jacob, I want to thank you so much once again for joining me on this edition of Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Florida Panthers defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs by a final score of five to two. Get some help by the Ottawa Senators to win the Atlantic Division. Uh, they um seriously, thank you so much, and I can't wait to do some playoff post games with you, my friend. Tell everybody where they can follow you online. Yep, you can follow me on X at Jacob Winans 8. Uh, and likewise, I am super excited to get this thing going. Uh, we're we're getting spoiled here. We're just always always in the postseason, always have playoff series to look forward to. And this this one's no different. This is gonna be awesome. I don't take this for granted, and Florida Panther fans, please do not take this for granted because th- this this isn't this isn't gonna be forever. So let, let's let's just get ready and let's um and i'm excited i'm excited that's uh that's i'm gonna end i'm gonna end it there <laughs> as i'm running out of words to say <laughs> there but thank you thank you so much jacob and i will see you next week my friend looking forward to it and before i let you go i see the hat on you gotta shout out the heat we got a big one coming up go heat big win tomorrow. um hopefully they can pull out a win and uh face off against the knicks in round one so go heat Yes, sir. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Jacob Winans. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.